it was madness. I know, just, just that. Morty Pal, how are you? Very well, how are you? I'm exceptionally good because I'm good. looking at bright, smiling, shining faces of our guests at Comic Con Yorkshire. Now, as we, as we mentioned in the preamble, guys, we are opening up the lines to you. We want to know what questions you have got hidden in the recesses of your brain that you want to pose to Tim, whether it's about Outlander or Hapless or Toast of London. But I think... Good, o- good omens. And good omens. And, uh, and good omens. Thank you. I went for three. You went for the big one straight away. I went for the big one straight away. <laughs> or the one that I think everybody's going to pose questions for. Baldur's Gate 3. So, if you've got questions, guys, bring yourselves down to the front. Stand yourselves next to our speaker. In fact, you don't have to set yourselves to... Bring it in. You can be our first question. Bring it in. Yes, yes, yes. Looking amazing. Everybody else, get yourselves into position. Just next to the speaker. We will line it up for you. Uh, how are you? Hi, you look amazing. Hi, thank you. I'm very good. Good. We need the, the, the mic on, Matty. We're all ready to go. I know I started it off fresh this morning. Hello. What's your name? Um, I'm Del. Hi, Del. Hi. What is your question... For the legend. Well, I know a lot of people are going to be asking Baldur's Gate questions, but I thought I'd start off with a good omens question. What was it like on the set, especially meeting like uh, Michael Sheen and David Tennant? And was it a dream come true? Because I know that it would be a dream come true for me if I got to work on Good Omens. Well, I'm a massive Neil Gaiman fan yes. anyway, and I was obsessed with Good Omens and all, you know, Ocean at the End of the Lane and all of the Graveyard Book, all of it. Mm-hmm. So then to be part of it and to actually speak Neil's words is, ju- is just a dream come true. And the little details that we had that were just so lovely. So Terry's chair and hat were on set all the time. So anytime in front of all the monitors and every time we did anything, there was always Terry was always ever present whenever things were being done, which was just the most beautiful sort of honoring thing that we could do. And then it's just insanity. You're just kind of looking at going, oh, it's Crowley and Aziraphale. That's just weird. And now I'm chatting to you in, in, the, in the bar or in the, restu- you know, in the restaurants or in the, the, the record stores and things like that. It was just a dream, a dream job. It's just awesome. And then you realize just how much, how much uh, special effects are involved. Like when I get, spoiler, when I get eaten by the giant kind of Cthulhu octopus, that took two days. It took two days to be pulled out of a building, dragged along, and then eaten and, and descended into hell to then get regurgitated again much later on. But yeah, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary job. Roll on Good Omens 3, whatever happens then, which I don't know. Okay. Otherwise, I would say, I genuinely do not know. Before you ask. Before you ask, <laughs> I really don't know. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Have a good rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you so much. Give her a massive round of applause. Amazing. So if any of you are thinking about getting eaten by an octopus, give yourself a good two days. We're all good. Oh, yes, slide least. on it. Slide on it. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, hello. What's your name? Uh, Josephine. Josephine, beautiful name. What question <laughs> have you got for Tim? Um, it, it's a Baldur's Gate 3 question. Um, I was just going to ask, if you uh, were to play Baldur's Gate 3, would you still go for Gail as your character, or would you choose a different origin character? <sighs> A different origin character. Um, I've heard a lot said about Astarian, so I'll be intrigued. I'll be very intrigued. But also, um, I would I would love to play as Gale, just because I, it would just be such a, a, a sort of weird meta thing to do. I'm playing as me. It's me. I'm being me. I should know what's coming up, but I've got no idea what happens now. So I think that would be really good fun. And because it just snakes off in so many different directions. And also there are so many bits that we recorded. Four years of recording. There is going to be bits in that game, no matter how much you play it, that you will never, ever see. Because certain things have to happen in a certain correlation of people in place. And and we will record lines going, this is some of my best work. (laughs) Nobody is going to see this. Not a single person, unless they just happen to click on that one thing to release this particular thing. So I think I would like to do that and then go, ah, yes, I'll be the one person. That, ah, yeah, you see, by the ridge, no one's going to see that. So yeah, I'd like, to do, I'd like to do that. And then just shout at sorcerers. That's, that's obviously what wizards do. Thank you. Great question, Josephine. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, round of applause. Come on, we want to share the love. And for those of you that I gave Haribo to, Haribo to a little bit earlier on, stop playing with them. Don't lick the damn thing. <laughs> 
Stop licking the damn thing and eat it. I've been waiting for that. Let's bring him. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Emily. My question is actually about folklands. Oh, yeah. So I wondered either what was your like favorite myth or superstition you've already covered or one you'd really want to cover? Uh, favorite care? one that we've covered that we haven't uh, released yet was about uh, the witch Black Annis, which is a Leicestershire, I don't know if anyone knows about Black Annis. I wrote it's my a, dissertation on her. Uh, well, <laughs> of all <laughs> things to choose. <laughs> wow. But we were taken as is kind of the brilliant thing about folklore is the secrets and things that kind of lie underneath things. So we made uh, some preliminary th uh, sort of uh, inroads and we got to meet the Black Annis Morris yeah. group. And then from the Black Annis Morris group, they said, would you like to go and see the bower? It was like, uh, we can go see the, 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 the witch's bower, the hill that the witch lives in where she would skin children and then wear them as a skirt. Yes, I want to see that. They said, oh, well, it's in a private area that you can't say where it is or who owns it or anything else, but come, come and see it. So we went to this person's house, knocked on the door, and they said, are you here to see the witch? It's like, yes, I'm here to see the witch. <laughs> come down, and it's in this kind of strange, like, glade area at the bottom of this uh, garden. But what was really strange is in the next door garden is uh, a children's play area. And you think, do you have any idea <laughs> the history of this particular area, of this child-eating monster that's supposed to live in this hole in the ground? And you have your kid's play set just literally there. But, so that was really good fun. It's so interesting just to kind of break it all down and to see the mythology and how it blends into Indian mysticism, because of the, the dysphoria that are now there and how it marries together. That was absolutely fascinating. But the one I really want to do is a thing called the Hexham Heads. Has anyone heard of the Hexham Heads? Of course you've heard of the Hexham Heads. <laughs> so the Hexham Heads were a series of uh, stone heads that were found at Hadrian's Wall. And they were dug up uh, by an archaeologist. And they were, uh, no, they were dug up by a kid. A kid found these four stone heads and brought them home, and they said, oh, this, these might be really quite important, they might be Roman or pagan. We should um, give them to the local museum. So they gave them to the local museum, and the lady took them away to her house, and that night, she was, she was awoken by a growl from the downstairs, opened the door, and there was a wolf creature standing on the stairs, growling and snarling, and then ran out of the door. And then consequently, since then, there's been a series of curses and of bad omens that have happened. And then suddenly, they disappeared. And no one knows where they are, still, to this day. So there was a whole hoax thing. They were actually made of concrete, and they were made as a child's toy, but they're really strange-looking things. But there's a whole world that goes into conspiracy theory, where they're from, why they're there, are they sacrificial, are they man-made? That I would find fascinating to explore. The, the Hexam Heads. heads. Ooh. Seek it out. They will. They'll be banging it in the Google machine later on. Emily, you're amazing. Thank you so much no, for the question. Thank you very much. Thank You've you. got such an infectious smile as well. Sensational. Bring it on in. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Uh, hi, uh, I've met you before. Uh, my name's Dax. Hi, um, Dax. I'd like to ask a question about VG3, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Um, what's it like working on a video game that's one of the most prog progressive of its time? Um, just as like for the LGBTQ community and yeah. all that, all those kind of people. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's absolutely extraordinary. And when we're doing it, you don't really realize the impact it has or the reach it has because you're in isolation, you're doing your kind of little bits. Yeah. And as an actor, you just kind of, oh, I'll, make, I'll try and make this as believable and as good as I can possibly make it. And then when you kind of see it then all put together, it's incredibly humbling mm. and honoring and it's, it's such an extraordinary thing then to be a part of. It, it becomes more than the sum of its parts. It becomes more than just the world of Faerun and all the many wonderful things that are created. And the, it's the layering that I'm still discovering that people will still bring things to me. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, I'm so glad you got that from that or so glad you found that. So it's, um, it's an extraordinary thing. And I think it's a thing that is just going to live on far longer, probably than I will, to be quite honest. But to be part of it is a deeply wonderful thing. And I'm so incredibly proud to be part of it. And yeah, so I find it 
a, a brilliant thing to I'd, be part of. I'd like to thank you for your representation in it. Um, as someone who is part of the commu queer community, yeah. the whole game is just amazing for us in general because it's so much more representation for us as well. Oh, so that's I'd like amazing. to thank you so much for that. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, Dax, that's thank beautiful. You. So hard one. Round of applause. Wow. It's so cool how this game can touch so many people. And in so many different ways. Yeah. That's what's so, so extraordinary. Yes, yes. Hi, yes, yes. how are you? First Hi. of all, what are you eating? Ice cream, and I'm almost done. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. It looks, it looks epic. What, so nice. What's your name? Um, I'm uh, Cloud or Miles, and uh, I, I just kind of want to ask something that's like slightly related to Baldur's Gate 3, but like not really. Uh, it's just related to like I don't, I don't, voice acting. So, hmm. so like, do you have any like, like, do you plan to do any more voice acting other than what you've already done for um, Gale in Baldur's Gate? Yeah, absolutely. And there's been uh, a few things that have recently come in that I thought, oh, that'd be really exciting to do and just all very, very different. It's such a strange hybrid of work because it's kind of a little bit, little bit like acting and it's a little bit like a normal, regular voiceover, but because it's all mocap and you are, you are acting, but they can't see your face, so how can you express what you're trying to do, but without kind of giving like a little look or doing all the usual tricks you would naturally do? How can you do that, but how can you embody it? So it becomes like, when I was at drama school, we did a lot of mask work, where you just blank the face, and then how do you express that physically without it being too cartoonish? So to explore that and to continue to explore that, because when you see people that do it, and do it really well, you go, wow, that's incredible. I don't know how you've done that. When you watch someone do it and then you look at the screen into their avatar, which is usually blank or just whatever color you feel like making it that particular day and seeing the expression within it is, um, is extraordinary. So yes, I'd love to do, love to do some more. Yeah, I, I do think if you did more like voice acting and uh, mocap, that would be really good because you have done a really good job with um, Gail and Baldur's Gay. Like, I, I, He's a really good character. Like, like it's just, it's just, it's wonderful. I like it. Oh, thank oh, you. Isn't thank that you. smile everything? Give him a massive round of applause. You're amazing. Thank you, honey. I'd have, to I'd have to change my voice, though, I've realized. I went into the game okay. thinking, I'll, I'll do, I'll do, I can see that Neil's doing a voice. Oh, Neil's doing a voice. I'll just, I'll do this voice. What's the worst that can happen? So now, this is, a, this is, this is funny. I was on a ferry the other day from the Isle of Wight to Portsmouth. And I was with my youngest daughter, who was just being annoying. And I said, fine, fine, I'll get you some food, come on. And I said, I went up to the counter and I said, um, hi, can I get a, a coffee and what do, you, what do you want, an apple juice? And the guy who was serving me went, oh my God, you're Gale of Waterdeep. I said, you got that from coffee and an orange juice. Which I thought was, that's how far reaching you don't realize. I thought I should, probably should have been nicer to my seven-year-old. But no, no, it's done now. It's because it's so distinctive. You've just got the most amazing... Hasn't you got the most amazing voice? Oh, with you and it. You, you and Brian Blessed sat next to each other. It's oh, just like dreams come goodness true. Goodness me. Can't wait for his panel later on. You'll all get in for a real treat. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Bring it on down. We have got the Joker in the house. Give him a round of applause. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Hi there, Tim. Um, I was... What was it like working on Toast? Oh, that's just, it was just ridiculous and mad. So we would do our bits all together. So all those bits in the studio would be, you'd go in on a Monday and you'd just be sitting in pretty much darkness, windowless rooms with just, just oddness happening all the time. People would come in and say, we're now going to advertise cigarettes for the Democratic Republic of Congo. And you go, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this. And the whole... German voiceovers where they're very close and we're just supposed to sit there going, yeah, that's great, Stephen. Yeah, can we, can we just get a yes? It sounds a bit too positive. Can we get a no? And just keeping that level constantly sends you a little bit, I've got to go and stand outside and see daylight for a while. But it was just brilliant, reading the Bible on acid. I mean, that's what you want, that's what you want from a day at work. <laughs> Let's read the Bible on acid. Hey, Tim, can you hear me? This is Clem Fandango. There you are, standing in your sister's clothes. And your World War II, <laughs> your World War World II, II facial, facial hair. hair. <laughs> My favourite one is where Clem Fandango keeps taking his button off. He was like, hey, Stephen, can you hear me? It's Clem Fandango. Yes, I can hear you. He goes, the, the client was very specific. You need to... And by the end of it, he's like... Yeah, I know, that was, that was so bad. And to time that, to get that just right. Hey, Stephen, can you hear me? 
Yeah, so it's very specific. You want to then describe... Oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Perfect. Fun. And what a great question and an amazing outfit. Round of applause. <laughs> Some of those outfits you wore in that were unbelievable, man. We would walk in and Matt would say, what are you wearing? And we'd go wearing this. He goes, no, nope, it's too... No, come here. And he would just literally kind of like just cut bits off. I had to wear a baked bean T-shirt at one point yeah. with the whole midriff just cut off. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> Absolutely no reason at all. What goes through someone's mind to decide that just to think of that? That's that. That is some unique personality, just, right there. And I actually had to bring in. This is this is. I brought in. They said, "Do you have anything at home, Tim?" And I said, "I've got something which I think would be brilliant." And it's a, a, a breakfast beret. Okay. I had when I was doing Outlander. Um, I found an old copy of Mandy, and in that copy there was a, a knitted pattern for a breakfast beret, complete, replete, I should say, with beans, tomatoes, bacon, the whole thing. Yeah. Bright yellow, amazing, still got it. And he said, yeah, bring it in. So I brought it in and yeah, so, he, so Danny wears the breakfast beret. That is amazing. Which is wonderful. And you've still got it? Still got it. Next Comic Con we want to oh, see you. Bring, bring it, it out. Bring oh, it with you. it's a wonderful thing. Everyone's going to have pictures with that on. We'd love that, wouldn't we? The breakfast beret, yes, we'd love it. Bring it on in our next question. Hey, 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 rock and roll, looking awesome. Thank Thank you. Hi, Tim. Hi. Uh, I'm Jenny. Um, bit of a question for you. If Gail was any class other than a wizard, which he is perfect for, what class do you think he would be? Oh, good question. What class? I think he would like to toy with druids. I think he'd definitely toy with that. Or paladin. Paladin seems very popular. Paladin is good fun. Paladin, good fun. Or drow. Just push it right out there. Paladin, Paladin and Drow, yeah, and Druids. I, I do feel he would still have beef with sorcerers, though. It's like, oh, you put all this work into being a wizard. Sorcerers, oh. just get that magic for free. That's not fair. That's not... The, the thing about... Don't get me started about sorcerers. <laughs> the thing about sorcerers, as I've said many times before, if you got on a plane and someone just said, I feel like I could fly this plane, you would get off the plane. It's the same with sorcerers. Oh, I feel I could do some magic. It, that, that, that's not right. It takes years of study. How do you know from what canon this particular thing is coming from. You don't, because you're a sorcerer, sorry. I've, <laughs> I've drifted, I've drifted. Thank you very much. Great question, Jenny. Round of applause, bring it on in. Share that love. Oh, it's all about the laughter, bring it on in. Hi, T-Rex. How are you doing? All right, thank Let's you. bring that mic down. Thank you. Uh, hi, Tim, it's Claire. Hi. Hello. Um, so, I, obviously you're an avid reader. Um, what book or character would you love turned into a TV series or a film and acting? There's a great series that I'm really surprised no one has done. And there's a writer called Algernon Blackwood who wrote a series called John Silence. And he is a psychical detective. And he was the first psychical, before Sherlock Holmes and the Hand of the Baskervilles and dabbling in the supernatural. And there's a whole sequence of these and there's a, a writer called William Hope Hodgson who wrote Karnaki, The Ghost Finder, which they did turn, Donald Pleasance did a little bit. But John Silence, they haven't touched. And I just think that would be extraordinary. It delves into the weird. It borrows from folk horror, paganism, druidry, all sorts of weird and wonderful and amazing, amazing things. And things that are forgotten that should be remembered. Things built on top of fairy hills or barrows. And I think that would be an extraordinary thing to do. And there's a great thing in Karnaki, the Ghost Finder, where he has um, a pentangle of neon. So he has this, this custom-made neon pentangle. I just think that as a visual would be amazing. That sounds cool. Thank you very much. No worries. These questions are perfect this afternoon. Yes, light it on. Hey, how are you doing? Loving the cosplay here at Comic-Con Yorkshire. Do a little about turn. Give him a, give him a little spin. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I actually had to slip the Haribo ring onto yeah. that... Gorgeous pink <laughs> earlier on. Hi, what's your name? Cole. Cole? Um, what's your question? Out of all your roles and characters and everything, who, which one do you feel that you connect with the most and why? Okay. Connect with the most? I, w I would probably say, probably two, actually. And I would say Marlo from Upstart Crow, because I think that's a part of me that I would just love. That, just that sort of, yeah, we're doing it. It's over there, brilliant, let's do it. I would love that. And there's a little part of me that is that. And I think also, uh, in recent times, um, Richard Manners from Geek Girl is very similar and close to me. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a girl dad. And so to play that on screen is really nice. And to kind of give that positivity that I have with my kids and kind of put that into a show is really 
nice and it's lovely and it's great to be a part of something, something like that. Have we seen Geek Girl? Yes. Oh, yes. There was a whoop cheer and a holler on yes. this side. Thank you so much for an awesome question. We love that. Yes, loving Geek Girl? Yes. Woof. What a great role. For those of you that have yet to check out the incredible show that is Geek Girl, now available on Netflix, all you have to do is type it into that little Google machine, go and check Tim out in his, all his glory, in his dad mode. Full on dad mode. Full on dad mode. Full on dad mode. They're Full the best modes though, mate. They're Without the, a doubt. They're the best modes. Let's bring it on in. Feel like a proud dad with all these questions firing out from you. Awesome audience. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Belen. I come from Spain. Um, well, welcome from Spain. Welcome you. to Yorkshire. <laughs> I live here, actually. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> so, team, did you expect all the love from the community from Gail since Baldur's Gate release? Uh, no, I didn't in any way, in any way at all. I had n no idea what to expect at all. I literally... Got, thank you. Welcome, Brian. Can't take my dad anywhere. <laughs> and, um, uh, so I, I just, I took it as, as a job, as any actor would take a job. And I thought, well, I just want to do it as, be as well as I can. And then it stretched from a year to two years. Well, okay, this is going on a bit. And then from, then COVID happened. So then I had to do all of it at home, which is strange when you're doing death sounds in your daughter's bedroom, in a wardrobe over under a duvet, and your child runs up in tears going, is everything okay? As you're being shot with arrows. I'm just being, daddy's just been shot with arrows. And then a spear. And now I'm walking into a lake of ice. And now a lake of fire. Could you go down, please go downstairs. So there was a lot of that happening. But I had no idea that any of, any of this would happen. You think it's gonna be, you hope it's gonna be popular. You hope people like it, you hope there's a life beyond what you're doing. But I had absolutely no idea and, and that it would turn out like this. And you're enjoying it, like. Oh, I think it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing and I love it. I love hearing people's stories. I love hearing what people get from it, from the character, how it connects with them. It's what you do it for, it's what you act for. You want to at least try and get to one person. If you get to one person, then you think, yeah, that's, that's good. That was, a, that was a good day in the office. That's a good job. But if it gets to more than that, then it just becomes like, wow, that's, that's incredible. That's amazing. What an incredible, humbling experience it is. So, yeah, I'm thrilled. You are iconic. You are iconic. Oh, stop mate. it. That question was awesome. But before you run away, turn around, turn around, turn around to the crowd. Because I want you to say Tim again. Just the way that you said it before, because it was everything. As loud as you can. You ready? Tim? Team! Beautiful. Do it one more time. Do it one more Team. time. Oh, there we go. That's it. Made the morning. Love it. Yes. Spanish accents mean everything. Felt like it was the set of Modern Family. Team. Beautiful. Bring it in. Hi. Loving, loving it, loving it. Oh, here we go. You've got your very own entourage. related to voice acting, what are like the hardest parts of voice acting and also what do you enjoy the most when it comes to it? The hardest parts of voice acting are the, are the were for me on this game, because it was the first time I'd done anything like this, was the very, very beginning. Because they barely tell you a thing. They didn't tell me what the game was <laughs> for a year and a half. When you're standing in there saying the line, like, what, it, what is this game? Because it looks a little like, is it Dungeons and Dragons? I'm not allowed to say. Oh, oh, no, it's fine, just ignore it. So that was really difficult. And trying to find what the character is, the balance of what they want it to be. We want it to be a wizard. So do you want it to sound like Gandalf? Do you want it to be like a wizard? Or do you, how, like that's really broad. It's like saying we want it to be like a dolphin. Well, there are lots of dolphins. What type of dolphin do you want exactly? So breaking it down and finding it and then making a bold decision just to go, do you know what, I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make him human, and he just happens to be that. I think that's more interesting, because then you can bring in flaws, and then they won't be brilliant at everything, and they will make mistakes, and they will do all the things that we do, and it's relatable, and you can then push it, so when the character gets more malevolent, you can hopefully, there's a, there's a humanity in that malevolence, you're not just being evil. And also, when someone then is not just being good, because that's quite boring as well, yeah. just being good. You think, oh great, they're being good again. But if you're good with an edge of something else, then it shows flaws and there's humanity in that and there's things you hopefully, as an audience, you can pick out. So the beginning part was the hardest and the fun bits were either being shot with arrows <laughs> or walking into a lake. Uh, the, the incantations are really good, mm. but you'd have to do those at the end because you'd have to scream them quite loudly and it would just rip your voice to yeah. pieces by just shouting wildly in a room of myconids, 
or something like that. I don't know what any of these. I don't know what any of this means. It's all in Latin. I don't know. Okay, fine. I think it sounds like this, and then having to Google it, and then going, well, this. You can say it like this or like that. Well, that doesn't help me. Just give me the line, and I'll say the line. So yeah, that they were fun. They were fun to because then that really felt like I'm a wizard. Yeah. And I'm yeah. shouting. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. High praise today. We're loving it. Well, we love Gail as a character. In fact, over the course of Comic-Con Yorkshire, we've had some incredible cosplay, but I've got to say that Gail as a character is the one that I have seen the most cosplay of of any character. And that's pretty cool, That right? is very cool. We've got Gail's in the audience, right? If you're dressed as Gail, can we please invite you to be upstanding if you're able? Let me take a look at you. Let's take a little peek. And see how many gales we oh, got. We got yes. one, oh, one, one with two, the Tara. Three, Look, one with four. the little him. Can we get the gales oh, up yes. to stage? Bring, come on, guys. We want to see you. Let's bring. Can we have a round of applause, please, for all the gales that we've got? Awesome. Hello. Do you guys want to get a picture in with Tim? Shall we do this? Quick, jump on stage if you can, if you're able. Be very, very careful. Let's get a picture in before we go into our next question. Just because I just recognized how absolutely sensational you all look. So come out, come to the front of the stage. Our amazing crew will get a, a nice little shot. Look at him. Everybody's got their cameras out. Beautiful. Excellent. Tim, do you want to go in the middle? Tim, slide in the middle. Look at this. There are so many jokes that I've got to keep inside me right now. Please do that. Please do that. Ready? Big smiles, big cheers. Make some noise out in our audience. It's what we're all about here at Comic-Con Yorkshire. We are sharing the love with an, an incredible array of beautiful cosplay. And Gail of Wardsteep, give yourselves a round of applause, peeps. You look amazing. Whoop, 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 whoop. Beautiful. Right, I won't embarrass you anymore. Please feel free. Take a beautiful little step as carefully as you can down, the, down those stairs. And I believe that one of our cosplayers have got a question for you next. How epic a memory that must be, because if you've, if you've invested your time and your money to, to create an outfit that is so iconic and so down in the detail, guys, you've just lived the dream. You look amazing. And to be on stage with Gail himself, there we go. Now, let's, let's get a good question. What's your name? Hi, I'm Tegan. Hi, I Tegan. I met Tim at Liverpool. You did? Yeah. But I came all the way from Scotland today to ask you what you're most looking forward to when you come to Scotland. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Just everything. Because my dad's Scottish, so I am half Scottish. And so my kids have now invested in Scotland greatly. But uh, what am I most looking forward to in Scotland? Uh, seeing a lot of friends, uh, hopefully going to Loch Ness. That, what I, I really want to do that. Uh, Beleskin House, do people know about Beleskin House? It's the house where Alistair Crowley... Uh, did the Abra Melon where he invoked a load of demons and then went on board of this now and left it and then was bought by Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin and then it just burnt down mysteriously twice. So I'm going to go there because uh, that's, that's fun. That's a good day out. That is a good day. And uh, maybe uh, a deep fried Mars bar. You need a deep good fried one. Mars deep fried. Deep fried anything. Tonics tea cakes. And then a lay down. I you some, actually. Did you? Yes. Love a tonics. It's not a euphemism, it's a thing. <laughs> Love a tonics. <laughs> Oh, glorious. Tonnocks was the heart of my 80s. That was, that was it. Love that. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Awesome question. Welcome from Scotland. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> oh, I love that. It was, honestly. That was like the heart of my childhood. It was like Tonnocks tea cakes. That was it. I miss, I miss so much stuff from the 80s and the 90s that have, that have just sort of disappeared. Is there anything that you... Do you know what I was discussing just the other day? And this is not a word of a lie. Go on. One of the greatest culinary things that we have lost in this country. And that is a tinfoil hedgehog with a little piece of cheese and pineapple Boom. stuck on as like the spines of the hedgehog. That's it. That's, that's a, a birthday party right there. Yes, thank you. All of a sudden, yes, that's, <laughs> that's a celebration. And then a little Tunnock's tea cake as a treat. Nice. That's yes. it. Indiana Jones on the TV. That's it. I'm done. Perfect. I'm done. But for those of you that go to the Met Gala Ball, you're missing out, peeps. Missing out. <laughs> Bring it on in, guys. How are we doing? How many questions we got left? OK, good. We got two. Then we'll do something special. Hi, Tim. I'm David. Hello. So I've got another voice acting question um, for you. So what was it that pushed you to give voice acting a go? Like, what was it that, you know, attracted you about? Well, I've always, with voice acting, I've always loved radio. So I was brought up in a lot of radio comedy. My dad refused to watch anything that was made after about 1957. He was like that. So it was all black and white comedies and radio comedy. So I grew up on just listening and, and hearing and learning the cadence and, and, the, and the speed of it. It has to be a different speed because if you're listening to it, you're probably listening to it whilst doing something else. You're driving or you're making food or you're doing... So it's a slower rhythm 
than you would usually do in order to land gags and things like that. So it was, the, it was getting a chance to do, to do that in a totally modern medium, in a, in a realm that it was totally fresh and new. And it's the excitement of doing something new and different. That's why we do it. It's like, oh, okay, I've never done that before. Let's do it. I've got no idea how this works. We'll find out. Fake it till you make it. I'll just go with it and I'll find... I'll find the route as I go along and then hopefully it'll all sit into place. But it's just, it's fun and it's, it's all the same thing. It's creating character and telling story and they are the most important things. Telling a good story. And Baldur's Gate is a, is a phenomenal story just that it's very hard. Just the, the journeys of the characters and the arcs are phenomenal and then just to get to, to play that is, is a great honor and fun. It's really, really good fun. Hopefully we'll see more of you on the voice acting space. Hopefully. Hope. Hopefully you will. Thank you, Tim. Brilliant. Always. Thank you, David. You've got an awesome voice as well, good sir. Very strong. Very like, strong. I can very much relate to that as well. My dad only watched the Ealing comedies. That was it. That was the only thing that he'd ever yeah, watched. Absolutely. Everything else was like, well, it's too modern. It's, it's too 1978. Modern. That's too modern? Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop, nothing? That's nope. too much. Unbelievable. Too, too, too modern. Yeah, can't too handle modern. it. He doesn't have a phone. No, not bothered. Bring it on in. Hi, how are we doing? Hi. Uh, so it's just uh, so if you didn't voice scale in Baldur's Gate, who would you like to voice, and how would you voice them? Oh, awesome! Who would I like to voice? <laughs> and how would you do and it? How <laughs> would I do it? I th <laughs> who would I do? I think a Starion would be too obvious, so we're not going to go with a Starion. We won't do that. Maybe what would I? Who would I do? Someone really evil. Raphael. Raphael. Could you give us a Raphael? <laughs> a Raphael as a Brian Raphael. Blessed. <laughs> that would be that would be a weird combo. <laughs> Welcome to the House of Hoop. <laughs> that would be very strange. Oh, come in. You're going to die. That would be uh, just that would be very strange. A very odd combo. Nightmarish in its wake. I There's dare, the mashup that you never knew you yeah. needed, but now you've got it in your heart. It's everything. <laughs> Oh, what a great question. Thank Round of applause. So Bring well, it in and share good. some love. I think we got one more. How are we doing? I am loving the Moomin. Loving the Moomin. Thank you. Um, Snuffkin, is that right? Yeah. Snuffkin. There you go. Snuffkin. Ooh, there's um, 80s as don't well. Don't test me on my Moomins. <laughs> don't do that. Um, hi, my name's Mo. Um, my question is, um, of all the like dynamics that like Gail has with the other, male char like, the other main characters, mm. which was like your favourite to act out? Like with the other characters? Probably because it's, 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 uh, it's like oil and water is Karlak. Mm. Because that was just such a fun, volatile thing to do. And you've got to remember, in the early days, I didn't know what Karlak sounded like. I didn't know who Karlak was being played by. I had absolutely no idea. So you just create it in your head what you think these things are going to sound like. And then when you hear Sam doing it, oh, right. Oh, okay, yeah, that all, that all makes sense. But that was, that was a really fun, a really fun thing to do. So yeah, Karlak. Boom. Thank you you look amazing as well. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Woo. Did you knit that hat yourself? Oh, amazing. yes, round of applause for Mom as well. She can check that out on YouTube. Let her know that the love is being shared all over the place. Well, Tim, that's been an amazing array of questions. We've that's loved great, it. Isn't it. Living life and loving it. Now, I want to do a little deep dive before we go. We're going to play a little game with Tim. If you joined us yesterday, I handed out this paddle to my wonderful... Oh, we got a whoop for the Never Have I Ever paddle. We're going to play Never Have I Ever with the legend that is Tim Downey. So let me pass you that. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm right. going to ask him a series of questions. Very quick. All he has to do is raise the paddle if he has done it, to have, and if he's never done it, to never. Right. Now, if you have done it, we're going to deep dive that a little bit more and find out. Oh. Okay, well, that's obvious then. I'm going to say no every <laughs> single time. No, 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 no. It's not the way we play that game. Okay, right. Let's start off nice and easy. Uh, never have I ever worn Crocs with socks. Uh, no. Nope, boom, good. Never Excellent, have. start never. it off. Uh, never have I ever used my celebrity to get me out of trouble. Oh, yes, I've done Oh, that. there we go. Right, okay. Yeah, now, this that. is how interesting done we're going to... Right, tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, well, getting out of trouble is mainly getting to the front of a queue. Okay, I've all just right. got like, I've got kids, I really, you should go and do the, go and do the thing. And it's, it's worked once. The, that was only because I was, um, I was getting into a, 
into a, a restaurant and the person there I went to drama school with. So it actually worked out quite well. The other times though, which I don't really want to go into very much, is when you try it and someone just looks at you as if to go, yes. <laughs> uh, could I, 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 it's so awkward for you, but I, oh right, I'll just, okay. That's fine. No, I'll, I'll be at the... I'm further back now because I left the queue. Yeah, I'm further back. It's fine. So that's happened. The full-on pie face. Full-on like awfulness. <laughs> Never have I ever walked out of a movie in a cinema. Uh, oh, yes, I have done that. Film? A, re a really strange... It was like a four-and-a-half-hour like Russian epic. And I was just sitting there just thinking, this is the slowest thing I've ever seen in my in my entire life. Well, you bought the ticket. <laughs> you well, it was actually going. free. My mother bought it. <laughs> my mother won it in a competition. And she said, oh, you like film. You can go and see this. So I went, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll go along and see this. And I started going, this is just unbelievable. They haven't moved for an hour. The camera hasn't cut once. I really, I, I think I have to leave. Perfect. I think it was, it was free, free, beautiful. But right, let's carry on. Never have I ever faked an illness to get out of a day of work. No, never have. You're a good boy. Never You're have. a good boy. Never have. Never have I ever... Ooh, that's a good one. Never have I ever chatted to another celebrity and had no idea who they were. That must have happened. I am sure. But I then found sure out who they were. Happened. Oh, I, yes. Do you know what? Yes, I have. I did it to Chrissy Hind. And I, remember, and I had absolutely no idea who this person was until my wife came over and went, that's Chrissy Hind. I was like... Oh, no, that's not Chrissy Hind. No, that's, that's, that's Chrissy Hind. So what, no. was the, what was the topic of conversation that you were having? A, we were just with sitting down. Rock I think it, was, it was literally that kind of thing of going, have you tried the Volavons? Because they're really rather good. And I get in before anybody else does. Oh, no, I've got some. Oh, good. What have you got? The little sausage rolls. No, I haven't tried those. It was literally the mon most mundane thing. They're a good pair of trainers. I'm after a pair of trainers. Like, Where did you get that? New York. I like New York. Do you like New York? It went on and on. The mundanity just kept growing and growing. And then you walk away and you think, I really should have said something a lot cooler than that. Would you have proper fanboyed out? If you oh, didn't without, know. Without a doubt. I would have in that situation. Without a doubt. That, her and Patti Smith would be the ones I just wouldn't know really what to do with myself. Yeah, it is. It's weird, isn't it? As, as, as an actor, that is probably more... Um, the musicians that you'd geek out over as opposed to other actors. Very much. Yeah. Very, very, very much. I once bumped into David Hockney, the artist David Hockney, and I had no idea what to say to him. What do you say to David Hockney? I just didn't know what, I didn't know what to do. I'd literally... I think he just I, handed me a glass just because I was looking very awkward and just kind of staring. Like, Would you like this? Yes, thank you. Bye. I spent a lot of my time, if you noticed, I spent a lot of my time going, sorry, can I... It doesn't matter, it's fine, I'll just be... I'll, just, I'll be over here. It'd be a case of, hello, hello. Oh, Jerry Maguire, <laughs> you had me a hello, that's enough. Uh, never have I ever had a beef with another celebrity. No, never Ooh, have. Good. Never Excellent. have. Keeping, no, never keeping, have. That, keeping that baby face all alive. Yeah, we love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, let's think of what else we can, we, can, we can offer up. Never have I ever used the line, do you know who I am? No, I never have. For fear of what we've mentioned earlier, that someone will go... No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And then I would have to do that awkward thing of, have you, have you seen, sorry, have you seen Paddington? Okay, you know in Paddington, and I wouldn't want to go through that again, because that's, that's dread, that's the worst thing. That's the worst one. And then having to kind of reel it out. Get, get your phone out, put an IMDB, have, have a look at that. That would be... Never awful. have I ever had a really awkward interaction with a fan. Awkward how? Well, in any context, you were on the night out, someone's recognized you, random stalks at the bar, random bits, random acknowledgement in the street that's led a bit weird, asked you to sign something that is completely irrelevant to you. I had someone ask me uh, to sign their arm, just that, oh, would you sign my arm? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then they had it tattooed. Nice, anybody got any signature tattoos? Oh, there was a slight way. Who have you got? There we go. It's probably it's him, it's you. It's me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, prob that's probably been, yeah, the most surprising. Because then my wife said, why has another woman got your name tattooed on themselves? Not even I have your name tattooed on me. And so that takes a bit of explaining. I don't know who she is. It I don't does. know who she is. What? 
<laughs> and it's in that, that moment with your wife where you really just want to snail shell it up. Yeah, like, just go, oh, there's something, oh, sorry, there's something going on I over here. something burning. Yeah, I've left a tap on. <laughs> Well, we love it. Well, we, we have left the literal tap on for you guys because we want you to flood in to get the biggest group selfie with the legend that is Tim Downey. Do you guys fancy this? That wasn't loud enough.